eight leaders and innovators have been recognised at this year's President's Science and Technology Awards. The fields of work include mosquito-borne viruses, cancer and advanced semiconductor tech. NUS President Professor Tan Eng Chai received the top medal for his leadership and dedication to driving science and tech research. Two scientists were honoured for breakthroughs in viral infections, which supported the nation's COVID-19 response. Four people were recognised in the Young Scientist category for those aged below 40 years old. The awards are administered by the National Research Foundation. In the coming months, we are shaping the next Research Innovation and Enterprise 2030 plan, which will build on the strengths that we have nurtured and to push beyond to achieve more ambitious impact. We will continue to invest to keep our basic research capabilities, talents and infrastructure at the cutting edge. And for more, we speak with two recipients of the President's Science Awards. We have Prof Lisa Ng, who is Executive Director of the A-Star Infectious Diseases Labs. She is honoured with the President's Science Award for her pioneering work in viral infectious disease research. And Dr Andy Tay, who is a Presidential Young Professor from NUS Biomedical Engineering, he received the Young Scientist Award for his pioneering research in immunoengineering. Both welcome to the studio and congratulations Thank on you. winning your awards. Thank Thank you. I want to start with Lisa. You mm -hmm. spent two decades studying pathogens responsible for some of the most deadly viral infectious mm -hmm. diseases. What are some of the breakthroughs and significant discoveries you've made about these diseases? Well, um, I've spent close to 30 years uh, working on uh, viral infections, immunity, so on uh, various uh, outbreaks, epidemics, and of course the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. No, so. I think in the areas of uh, infection and immunity, so I actually understand how a particular virus actually infects us. And when it does, is it going to be a, a severe disease or is it going to be a mild disease? So I think a lot of uh, the body of my work um, has always been focusing on identifying, you know, how are we able to control the disease right, in, in, in us? And, uh, and also to support the, uh, the clinical uh, and healthcare. So specifically, uh, by understanding how a particular uh, virus can uh, cause a severe disease, then we will be able to control it better by uh, looking at new avenues of uh, therapeutics. And this could include um, antibody treatments, or it can be antivirals or even a vaccine discovery. Mm. So, but along the line, I think therapeutics is also not enough. Um, we also need to uh, look at uh, diagnostics. You know, how can we improve the detection? Could it be more sensitive? Are we able to uh, differentiate between the different type of diseases? Mm. Well, you know, two to three decades ago, this was still quite an emerging yeah. field. How mm -hmm. did you decide to get started back then? I mean, in 2020, we have COVID-19, so everyone mm -hmm. started knowing about these more mm -hmm. uh, very prevalent viruses. Yes. But how did you get started okay. and what motivates you to continue? Um, well, that's a, actually a very good question. I think since young, I've always been very um, interested and curious about diseases. So um, my PhD was on uh, molecular virology and then I, then I uh, picked up immunology along the way. Um, I have to say that, you know, as a young researcher, uh, more than uh, 20 years ago, um, I didn't really understand how, um, you know, whatever that uh, we have uh, learned in the lab is actually very applicable to, uh, to the clinics. So I will say that the turning point was uh, during the 2003 SARS uh, outbreak in Singapore. I think uh, that was uh, quite historical, but it sort of uh, shaped my mind to uh, always look at uh, what is the problem statement that comes from the clinics. So I think that serves as a very uh, motivating uh, uh, um, direction for me to always look at research questions that will have a real world uh, impact that I could help the patient. So I'm not a medical doctor by myself, but you know, I feel that you know, how can I use science to help the clinical community? Mm. So I think that motivation came from, uh, from that 
that early, uh, that, that, that time. Yeah, and yeah. speaking of being a young researcher, we also have an Andy here with us. Let's talk about your area of research, right? Immunoengineering. That's generally about manipulating human immunity and then using it to treat chronic illness. Can you tell us more about your specific area of study uh, in the field of immunoengineering? Um, thank you very much for the question. Um, so the word immunoengineering is basically a term that we created by combining two words together, immune and engineering. Um, the very basic idea is that our immune system is very dynamic and it can be engineered for us to treat diseases. For example, Lisa pointed out that during the COVID-19 pandemic, we created vaccines to teach our immune system to recognize the virus and to eliminate the viruses. And what I'm trying to do now is that we are developing biomaterials, as you mentioned, to manipulate the immune system so that we tweak them in the favor of treating chronic diseases such as diabetic wounds and cancer. Mm, how exactly do we do that? Because your, your multi-pronged approach has actually demonstrated faster healing rates uh, in preclinical studies. What does this mean tangibly and pragmatically for the treatment and the care of diabetic patients and also cancer patients, as you mentioned. Right, so we can start with diabetes. So many people are getting uh, diabetes and about in Singapore, four diabetic patients will get a lower limb amputated per day. Um, around the world, every 30 seconds, a lower limb is amputated because the diabetic ulcers just simply do not heal. My lab has developed a technology called microneedle. With this microneedle, you can just put a patch onto the skin, the microneedle dissolves and release the drug. And this drug actually reprogrammed the immune cells within the skin and promote wound healing by as much as 200% faster in preclinical uh, models. Um, on the note of cancer, we have also uh, achieved similar uh, feats. So what we have done is that we developed something uh, called nanomaterials or nanotechnology, which we can then use to deliver DNA into immune cells and this would educate the immune cells to recognize cancer cells and to eliminate them. Mm, definitely very exciting uh, developments that we can look out for. But I want to ask also, uh, Lisa, yes. what are you looking forward to in the future in terms of your research? What mm -hmm. is the most exciting thing for you right now? Oh, I think I have many ideas in my mind, but I think just to keep my story short, um, I think the, uh, the COVID-19 taught us many lessons and uh, also it, challenge uh, many scientists to um, explore new approaches to answer um, old uh, problems. So I will say that uh, for the current uh, mosquito-borne viral infections is one of those that uh, I'm uh, refocusing on. I think it's uh, remained as one of my first loves. Uh, it's to really understand how um, a simple a small virus actually could cause long chronic joint pains. So that is something that uh, we still haven't found the answer and that's what I want to to discover. Yeah, and there's definitely a mm. lot more on the horizon for both of you and I want yes. to congratulate both of you again uh, for your awards this evening. I've been speaking with both Lisa and Andy here today. Prof Lisa Ng and Dr Andy Tate, both recipients of the President's Science Awards.